Hi guys, welcome to Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at the French model of 1874 FA bayonet for the 11 mm model of 1874 Gras rifle. Uh, this bayonet will also fit the Navy Kropenchek rifle and it's the correct bayonet for that rifle. So these were produced by the three main French state arms plants being Châteauroux, saint Etienne, and Toulouse. They're also manufactured by a number of uh, French contractors like uh, El Denny in Paris, Audrey in Paris, and Steyr in Germany. Uh, there were a couple other uh, manufacturers, but they made uh, commercial bayonets. I believe there was one manufacturer in Solingen. Other than that, I think uh, the other commercials were uh, the ones I've already listed being Châteauroux and saint Etienne and possibly Steyr. So the history of this bayonet, prior to the Gras rifle, the French used the Chasse and the Chasse had an absolute monster of a bayonet. I've got one to look at here. And it has what's called a Yatagun style blade with a double curve in the blade. And the purpose of that is to bring the tip of the blade away from the bore of the muscle, muzzle. So when you're loading a muzzle loader and ramming a ramrod down, you're not stabbing the top of your hand on the blade. Now while the Chasse was a needle fire paper cartridge uh, breech loading rifle, it uh, kept the same style of bayonet as earlier breech loaders. So with the Gra, it was deemed that um, it's not a breech loader, we don't need a Yadagun style blade anymore, and when they radically rethought their um, bayonet, they came up with something straight. Also of interest, French bayonets of the time were mounted to the side of the rifle. I can't remember if it's the left or the right side of the rifle, but they're interesting because one of the few bayonets that isn't mounted underneath. Now, there were a number of issues with the Chasse uh, rifle bayonet. And in 1871, the French uh, sustained a humiliating defeat uh, against the Prussians in the Franco-Prussian War. So in 1872, the French Ministry of War led an inquiry into small arms in uh, the Franco-Prussian War, and they found a number of shortcomings in the Chasse rifle, and they also found a couple of shortcomings in the bayonet. So I'll bring the bayonet back over. As you can see, it's absolutely huge. Apologies, I can't quite get it all in frame. My bipod, tripod is as high as it goes. I can't quite get everything in frame, but it's an absolutely massive bayonet. And because it's so big, it's it's very heavy. It was deemed to be too heavy uh, to be an effective bayonet. And further, it has this screw at the muzzle ring. Now what that's for is adjusting the size of the muzzle ring to fit an individual rifle because they were all slightly different. So that meant that your Chaspo bayonets were not interchangeable with uh, other rifles. And that was a major, major shortcoming. So between that and the weight, it was deemed that a new bayonet was needed. So there was a trial that was conducted. So in 72 and 73, uh, new rifles were trialled, and the winner was actually a modification of the Chasse rifle that was designed by Captain uh, Basil Grupp, who was a artillery officer in the French army. Poor fella, because he was an officer in the French army, uh, meant he didn't get the royalties. The, uh, the French government didn't have to pay those, which uh, sucks for Captain Basil Gras. So the bayonet itself here was actually modeled after the 19th century sword, the Epée de Combat, uh, Epée translating to sword in French. And having a look at the construction of the blade, it's got a T-section style blade, so it's flat on the top. And then it's got a recess on either side that comes down to a blade. It's nice and long. And it's got a false edge at the end here where my thumb is. Back from the blade. It's not very sharp either. It's, it's pretty dull. It's got a standard cross guard with a forward facing hook quillen. Standard muzzle ring. Wooden grips. Brass pommel. Leaf spring. Push button. Pretty standard. And looking at the scabbard, just a long steel scabbard with a ball at one end and a frog bar at the top, which is a standard frog bar for French bayonets. Easy way to spot if this has been captured by the Prussians and um, 
entered into service in Germany or somewhere else, generally the frog bar will be done away with and something else like this uh, Prussian stud will be attached to the scabbard. So this is obviously a captured Chasseau bayonet. Now, we'll jump into the markings. On the spine of the blade of the Chaspo, the Gras, and uh, early models of Bertier, the French engraved, uh, manufactured by the manufacturer in month and year. So what this one says is Med Arms de Saint Etienne, Zanvier, 1879, or manufactured in Saint Etienne, January, 1879. Don't know if you can make that out. I'm going to bring that up any clearer. There you go. Then, on the Ricasso of the blade, we have these two stamps. So, what they represent, one is for the general controller of the factory where it was manufactured, and the other is for the initial arsenal director. Uh, I don't know which is which, but um, that's what they're they represent, and those same stamps are supposed to be on the scabbard opposite the frog bar, but it's not the case on this version. We also find them on the ball at the base of the scabbard, so on either side. There's one. Get that to focus. There's the other. I'll put that back down. So moving to the cross guard, where are we? These three stamps uh, represent uh, military ownership. Let's see if we can get those to focus. And then we have a serial number down here where my right thumb is. At the front, we've got a letter prefix and then a five digit number. That's matching on the back of the frog bar just here. That's upside down. There you go. Now, initially, I believed that the letter prefix represented um, batch numbers, so similar to a Mauser-style serial number where each letter represents 10,000 numbers. Uh, but it appears to not be the case with French bayonets. So from what I can tell, uh, letters have individual meanings. I don't know what the meaning of P is. I know the meaning of X is for a training rifle or a designated training rifle and bayonet. But if you know what that P means, please let me know. I'd love to find out. Uh, there's a couple other markings on it. I don't know what they mean. So there's another one on the reverse of the hook, just here. I can't make out what it is. And there's a couple other little markings inside this recess. We've got a 17 on the crossbar, a little marking in front of my fingernail there, and a little one to the rear here, all inside the groove. I have no idea what they represent or what they mean. If you find out, please let me know. I would love to know. If this was a uh, colonial issued as well, it would also have an anchor stamped on the crossbar and possibly the scabbard, I'm not sure, but definitely the crossbar. So these were in service from uh, 1874 until the introduction of the Labelle, where they were replaced. The Labelle obviously being the first smokeless powder rifle. And what they were replaced with is the Labelle Bayonet, which is a cruciform blade, nicknamed a Rosalie. Put that away, don't need that. I'll do a separate video on the Chaspo and the Rosalie. So while these weren't ever used in a, um, a, a European war by the French, um, they were in service for a fair while around the world. So they were actually uh, in service in World War One and World War Two in a support role by the French, and they're still in service today in places like Somalia and Ethiopia, places where uh, vintage rifles are still new. Well, not new, but um, useful. So there are a number of countries that use the uh, the Gras, the uh, the Greeks, the Russians, the Chileans, Colombians, Argentines, and a number of these are actually captured and used by the countries as well, including uh, Germany. In terms of conflict, as I said, they never saw a European war, but uh, they saw a lot of use overseas in the French Foreign Legion and French colonial troops. So they saw use in uh, places like China, French Indochina, Africa. They saw use in World War I, uh, and again in World War II rearish as well. 
Further, Russia gave a number of these to the Spanish uh, communists during their civil war, and they saw use there as well. And they also saw use in the Pacific War with uh, Chile against Bolivia. So they saw pretty extensive use all over the world. Uh, very, very well used, and um, in my opinion, very, very beautiful bayonet. So if I've uh, missed anything or if I've made any mistakes, guys, please feel free to let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Other than that, have a great day. Bye.